All right, so now we're looking at key issue three in chapter four. And the key issue question says why pop culture is widely distributed. And it really kind of makes sense when we look at all of it. Pop culture relies on the internet. It relies on everyday living. So when we look at pop culture spreading around, it's going to do better with social media, the internet, television, radio, and whatever else. The key behind pop culture is money. you got to have money. It takes money to live pop culture. Whether it's buying fancy jeans, or buying clothes from famous marketed stores, or even buying those Jordans, or trying to live like the Kardashians, it's going to take money, mainly because you'll have to get out of jail and go to rehab and things like that. But it takes money to be able to live in a pop culture world. Now when we look at specifics behind pop culture, one of the things we're going to look at is the regional aspect of it. When we look at snacks, for example, we're going to find out that certain snacks are more popular in certain regions. So in the South, pork rinds might be very popular. Well, a lot of pork is grown in the South. So people are going to grow up, since they were little, used to eating that type of food. In the Midwest, it may be popcorn. Well, a lot of corn comes from the Midwest. So we're going to probably see popcorn being a lot more popular there. In places like Idaho, where they grow potatoes, potato chips might be more popular. And when we go to healthy areas, maybe a multigrain snack is more popular because you grew up on that. That was kind of like your family's culture in that. We'll also see a lot of pop culture with alcohol. First of all, we know during sporting events, we see alcohol really, really advertised. They give the impression that, oh, if you're not drinking during a game, there's something wrong. So that already is pop culture. And then we'll see certain types of alcohol very popular in the regions. So up near the Canadian border, like in Montana and Idaho, you might see Canadian whiskey more popular because those people would be used to drinking that in that area. Whereas in the southwest United States, where there's a heavy Mexican uh, cultural influence, we're going to see tequila. And then we could even take it farther. In the deep south of the Bible Belt area, we might see less alcohol sales because we have what's called dry counties where alcohol is not sold. And we have very traditional religions that wouldn't allow drinking. And we could even see in some areas like Las Vegas, there's heavy drinking done because of the gambling. So a lot of this comes down to a regional possession, a regional decision made on what we drink and eat. So now we're going to look at wine and how that plays in the pop culture. And there's a lot of different factors that can come into wine. Soil, climate, temperature, sunlight. That can all contribute to wine, as does teachers are familiar with giving tests and homework. That produces a lot of wine too, although that's probably a different kind of wine than what we're talking about. Now we're going to talk more about wine in the agricultural unit, but when we're talking about wine and pop culture, what we're looking at is how a wine becomes popular. And a lot of times it has to do with the flavoring. Because of where a wine is grown, whether it's the climate, the soil, the type of minerals that are in the soil, grapes develop different flavors. And areas are known for that. The Napa Valley area in California, they have a distinct flavor to their wine. Whereas in France, we take a look at the Bordeaux region and the Champagne region, they develop different flavorings for their wines and different styles of wines. Distribution of these wines will a lot of times be according to taste and, and income. So areas of the world, and especially the United States, that have higher incomes will go for a specific type of wine. Areas that may not be as particularly wealthy might go for other types of wine too. So that's what becomes popular in that region. Tourism can also come from winemaking. There are a lot of people that go to California to go on wine tours in that area. Now the key thing about wine is also we have to look at where in the world it tends to be popular. Wine is more typically popular in Christian and Christian settled countries than those where there are Hindu and Muslim dominated areas because of the lack of uh, typically wine drinking, alcohol drinking, things like that. So the next thing we're going to look at is clothing. And when we talk about clothing, there's a distinct difference between what people wore in folk cultures and LDCs and MDCs. Typically in folk culture, what you wear is for survival. So if you're wearing a parka, it's because it was cold. If you're wearing very loose-fitting clothing, it might be because it's warm. MDCs are entirely different. There is a couple factors that play into what MDCs wear. The first and primary one is their occupation. We wear things based on our jobs, especially as adults. 
Businessmen will wear a business suit. Construction workers will wear construction clothes because that is what's convenient or safe for them to wear in that environment. It is not very common to wear a Batman suit to a business meeting. Well, I kind of like the idea of wearing a Batman suit as much as I can. Wearing it to a business meeting probably would be frowned upon. So in MDCs, our outfits are dictated by our, our income level as well. Um, now, how do things spread out? That's because of communication. We start wearing things based on commercials, what we see on the internet, what rappers wear, what singers wear, what actors wear. Because of social media, TV, radio, whatever else, we hear ideas, we see ideas, and we look up and we're like, ooh, I want to wear that. And that's because we have the income level in our culture. Now, there are some folk outfits that have actually become pop culture. The poncho, for example, is folk culture that's become popular in MDCs. The parka, to stay warm up north. And the dashiki is actually something that's become kind of popular, and we see it starting to flood in the mainstream America. One of the best examples is blue jeans. Blue jeans were originally worn by miners and farmers and industrial workers because they were very thick. The blue jeans you wear are a lot thinner than the ones originally made. The original ones were probably two, three times thicker, and they were to protect the worker. In the 1870s, if you got a gash on your leg, there's a good chance you're going to lose your leg. The environment wasn't as clean. We didn't have the antibiotic soaps that we have now. So you had to wear them for safety. Later on in the 50s and 60s, it became a little bit more fashionable. In fact, it became so fashionable that people around the world started wanting to buy them because they wanted to be more American. It symbolized America and wealth and freedom. So a lot of places around the world start to buy into it. Places like in Europe start buying them in. And even in the Soviet Union, they were brought in, smuggled in, and sold on the black market. So in some ways, blue jeans, even in today's world, are frowned upon because it symbolized America and freedom in that aspect. <laughs> the final thing we're going to look at is electronics. And how does electronics affect pop culture? Pop culture was heavily influenced and helped by the electronics. It started with TVs. At first, only MDCs had televisions. But by the 1990s, we started seeing LDCs everywhere starting to be able to afford. TVs also became cheaper, but they were able to afford televisions. And we see them moving into that market. They start in America, eventually spread to Western Europe. Finally, the Soviet Union and other areas start really getting involved in that television market. The internet was also a really big thing. The internet starts up mainstream in the mid-90s to late 90s. And by 2000, it was mainly just MDCs. But in more recent times, almost every LDC is using the internet. And that is a main staple for pop culture to be able to spread. Certain singers that we don't really like to really remember were around got their start on YouTube which made some of us want to shut YouTube down, but there's cases like this video that is helped by it. So we can see that the internet can really help with pop culture and spread ideas around.